Are the vents under the headlights functional air intake vents? Or are they stylistic? They... <laughs> They were designed to be functional. But they are. Okay. All right. That's that's honest. Hey, everybody. We are here at the LA Auto Show with another episode of the Autopian Podcast. Uh, I'm Jason Torchinski, and I'm very excited to be here today. I've got also joining with me is uh, Stephen Walter Gossen from our site. And we have two guests from Toyota, Toyota's Calty Design Division. Uh, we've got Adam Rabinowitz and Benjamin Jimenez. So, guys, thanks so much for coming out. We really appreciate this. This is a, a big treat. And uh, Toyota, huge, one of the biggest automakers in the world. People have always seen your cars everywhere, and we've seen them for years. I know Calty is responsible for a lot of the design direction that's been going on in the cars. Um, we're going to start with the new Tacoma, I think, to talk about it, because... Uh, our own David Tracy was just on your uh, press drive. Its design has been significantly changed since the last version. And uh, David specifically wanted me to ask you guys about that front air dam under the bumper there. It's huge. And he said when he talked to some, some engineers and designers that it somehow translated, the, the, the large air dam translated into more room on the inside for passengers. And I'm not sure exactly how one follows the other, but he claimed that was the case. David, is that right? Tell me, am I wrong? Ah. Okay. So David, David is saying more room means more drag. We have to reduce it the other way. Anyway, tell me what you were thinking when you were transitioning from the previous Tacoma to this one, and any interesting details, including the giant air dam. If you want to talk about that. Well, I don't think we have to go into a lot of detail about that air dam. We don't. Mainly because, as a styling guy, yeah, we didn't want it. You didn't want it. No. I noticed it's black and kind of hidden. You're pushing this it back. This is really for aero and for fuel efficiency and meeting EPA targets. Right. Um, from a styling thing, this is just a, a need, not a want. And we were pretty much told you need to run with that. So, okay, th but this is an interesting question, too, because this comes up a lot. As a styling guy, you're being thrown all kinds of required things you have to put in the car. So how do you deal with that? Like this one, I can see it's de-emphasized. And actually walking back from it, I don't even think you really see it. It fades into the shadows under the car. So tell, tell me about, uh, is there anything else in here that was, like, is there another thing in the car I can look at here that was a requirement that you feel like you integrated in a way you're excited about? Yeah, so for example, the uh, vent on the over fender, that the, was also for aero. That little vent yeah. right there. In the, yeah, that is a very one. functional Part. Yeah. It actually reduces the frontal mass of the vehicle as it's pushing through the air. It ah. makes the air think the car's smaller. Sure, because you're perforating yep. it. Yeah. And so the air could get around. Like a it. cheese, yes. And so that was a very styling created direction to improve fuel efficiency. and Because it does look know, cool. CD it targets. does add some visual interest to the front there that you normally wouldn't get. Are the vents under the headlights functional air intake vents? Or are they stylistic? They... <laughs> <laughs> They were designed to be functional, but they are not. okay. All right, that's all, that's honest. That's Would you fair. say the same thing about the uh, the vents on the fender flares? No, those are one hundred percent. Those are those are what we were just talking yeah. about. Those oh, those the ones, the which are cool. Yeah, the okay. little trapezoidal league guys yeah. there. Those but, are cool. All right, let's tell. So, what were you thinking? So, when it came to designing this truck, I'm seeing some actually interesting. These bulgy character lines above the wheel arch are kind of a novel thing. I don't think I've so, seen before. What is that? Our main goal was to make this thing. Like, our concept at yeah. the studio, which aligned with engineering concept, was just badass adventure machine. We okay. just wanted to make it, you know, Tacoma's history and is kind of iconic look is big tire, slim body, high lift. Right. And we have some heritage in racing. Everyone knows the kind of the famous Iron Man, Ivan Stewart truck. Sure. Which are these really big, bold, you know, high lift, bulb, bulbous fenders, if you will, with these enormous tires. And we looked at that as some of the inspiration. We wanted to capture that in the exterior design of the new generation truck. Right. So all these were ways to make this have that high lift look. It brings the fender line up. It makes it feel rugged off-road. That was what we were targeting to keep that Toyota DNA together. Got it. Speaking of that, there, I noticed also that it seems, at least in the picture we're looking at, there is a slight rake yes. as far as the... It's mm -hmm. not just on a hill? That is an actual, is it actually raked? Well, of course, pickup trucks always rake mainly for loading the bed. So you have, ex, you have extra lift in the back, so as you 
fill up. Oh, right, right. Yeah. Were you guys able to incorporate that, incorporate that into the larger design? The fact yeah. that there was going to be yeah. that pitch? Yep. It gives it a little aggression. Yeah. yeah it's kind of fun. How it pinches down to the headlights in the front. Um, and how, so uh, what did, is there anything, uh, just walk me through the design of the truck. Like, is, are there other details here that you, you'd like to call out here? So when we, we got to do the uh, four brothers or the Toyota trucks in succession, which was really cool. And we wanted to make sure there's this family DNA. And part of that was slim, high-mounted headlights to emphasize kind of the technology, the techie feel. Okay. Um, we have the hexagonal, and don't count the corners because we'll, it'll probably be wrong. It wasn't, <laughs> right. um, wasn't great in geometry. Um, but the kind of hex grill is kind of what we called it internally just because that feels that's part of the Toyota DNA. Okay. Um, also, the vents under the headlight, all these things were part of trying to create a unified DNA that fits for not the nesting doll look, not where each vehicle is identical, but just like scaled Audi. differently. Yeah. Yeah. Not <laughs> okay. Yeah. Just that wasn't sure. our, our target. Yeah. Um, we also wanted to have this really robust chin or lower, and it really emphasizes that this is a capable vehicle. That We wanted to make sure that as a customer walks up to it, not only the Tacoma loyalists that need it to feel like a Tacoma, but future buyers understand that this is a rugged and capable vehicle, and that's what the styling was designed to do. Hmm. Okay. E- even simple things like the line that comes off the front tire goes up. All these things are designed to lift your eye point up and, and emphasize the already high lift that the vehicle is. Got it. The, uh, the kick up at the, the window in the back, that angle there. Yep. That's been showing up an awful lot on a lot of different car makers, that angled window thing. I know Toyota uses it a lot. I feel like I've seen other places. It's become kind of a shorthand for a lot of modernity. What, what do you think about that? Tell me about, like, what's, what's the thinking behind there? This, this thinking came from, again, that brother's relationship with Tundra. We wanted them. That was part of the side view. Yeah. Uh, and that was just part of our um, DNA for the DLO. Like this, depending on model, could have a two-tone roof, which also helps a very iconic. Right. See, kind of there. You know, when this is in TRD Pro form, it could have a a black roof, which is oh, cool. super cool. Right. I also I want to just take a moment to uh, point out a bit of uh, car designer terminology that I think is hilarious, and that is DLO, which stands for daylight opening, which humans call a window. Which I always like. I don't understand the daylight. O- what? Why? Can you tell me? Has it always been called that? Why don't they? Why are they not called windows? Is there is there a daylight opening that is not a window? Is it pot, like what do you call? Is a sunroof a DLO? No, no. Uh, <laughs> if it's a hole into the body that lets in daylight and not in the cab, is that a DLO? No, or is it, it's always a window. And then windshield is a windshield. The windshield, but the windshield would not be considered a DLO. No. Interesting. Back window is back window a DLO? No. Just backlight. the side. Backlight. So <laughs> it's the backlight. So windshield, backlight, and then the side windows are DLOs. Yes. And even, okay, so if it's a cargo area window, that's a DLO. All right. Well, you got you to put yourself into a meeting where you're talking about all these things. And then, yeah. you know, everybody's getting confused about which, which window you're talking about. So. Well, I mean, I understand <laughs> differentiating <laughs> windshield, rear window, or backlight. I don't know. I don't understand why window doesn't work anymore for DLOs, but whatever. Every every industry has their jargon. That's fine, huh? That's exciting. Um, all right. Well, this is this is very cool. Do you mind? Okay. So now, tell us a little bit about Calti itself. I know started in what seventy three, right? So nineteen seventy three. Yeah. This first, was first Toyota's. Studio. What's that? First studio in California. The first studio. And this yeah. was Toyota's first outside of Japan design oh. studio. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I mean, it's it's actually the first car uh, maker. To open a studio in California. Oh, oh, period. Yeah, period. Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay, yeah. that's a big deal. Toyota recognized that California was this kind of car culture happening. Yeah. In the world, um, in in North America, for sure, and uh, they really took this this leap of faith, this chance to uh, to open a studio, uh, right. in, in California. And they've had their hand in a lot of what we would think of as very iconic Toyotas Absolutely. over the years. Some of the most and I want to I want to show this. The very first concept car that came out of Calti, I believe was this car. What was the CX80? Yeah. In 1979 I think this came out and I I kind of love this thing. I think it's I don't necessarily know if I'd call it pretty, but it's a fascinating looking car with some deeply strange and interesting ideas. Do you guys can you tell me anything about this thing? I mean, what I can tell you is, you know, that the designers working on it are looking at the world around them. Yeah. Where are 
where are people moving in the in the future? Right. What are they? What are their needs? And they're trying to interpret that into an automotive form. Sure. Um, I mean, this does feel like what the future looked like in 1979, 1980. Sure. Absolutely. And actually, can you go go back to that guy real quick, one second? A lot Before of DLO. we get to this one, a lot of DLO on that. But there is like, but I'm th the the lower DLO <laughs> inside the door. I feel like is something that's still untapped. Yeah. Because belt lines are getting high, visibility is getting worse. We could solve that with some novel DLOs in the lower part. Also, the weird headlamp unit on the top of the hood. I kind of love. It's yeah. so bizarre. All right, let's go to the next one because the next one's pretty. At the FXV, yeah. this one was uh, mid '80s. I want to say. But this is actually very forward-looking. This feels like a '90s-ish kind of design. Wasn't that um, done by Kevin Hunter? Rear engine, I think so. yeah. yeah. Obviously, with the scoops, sir. I don't. Is it? It could be rear engine. Is that what the intakes are there? Yeah. Possible. I don't really know to be honest. Brake cooling ducts. Any any comments on the VFX? I believe that was done by our current president, Kevin Hunter. Really? Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. I'm almost positive. So really? I hope that's accurate. I, I think was, it's a very. At least there's a sketch. Of at least there's a sketch of it. Yeah. Is it really? Yeah. I like yeah. it a lot, and I'm trying to figure out what's going on on the backlight. Uh, is that a wiper under a secondary? Are there two panes of glass? See that line there? Yeah. I mean, it looks like an effort to, to incorporate some aerodynamics. Yeah. There yeah. So the air just sheets off of it. And it does yeah. look like a, a possible rear engine. Again, it could be. A, yeah. And, uh, it could be. Yeah. I, I don't know enough about that car to really give you a solid answer. That's all right. That's all right. We're gonna, we're gonna, I want to go through another one. That I think is that, Go to the Previa, please. Yeah. So the Previa was something designed in um, at Calti. This is one of those cars that I think um, car people tend to like a lot mm -hmm. because it's a mid-engined, supercharged van. Mechanics don't like it that much. Mechanics, oh, but they're so cool. And I think these, I think they were forward-thinking and they had all the accessories on that shaft. Way, I, I don't know. Yeah, it's kind of a dream vehicle, right? It I mean, is kind of a dream you, vehicle. You start, so unconventional. You do, yeah, you start form, form follows function. Yeah. They, they, your, your function is to carry people right to be a, a, a people mover and what's the best way to do it and then what's the dream on how, how to do that um, and that's really really what led to this and and it's know, it's, a an, company to it's an amazing it. I mean if you think about it the entire length of this vehicle is available for people or cargo because you're sitting like that's there's no hood and you're not wasting any no. space with hoods or whatever like yeah. that's actually a brilliantly designed vehicle yeah. Yeah. Toyota has the. It's really impressed when you look through their history, especially vehicles like this. Yeah. When they when the when the decision is made for innovation. Yeah. They have a wild amount of capability to do. Right. Really innovative product because this is coming from an era where minivans were really popular. Yes. You know. Yeah. And how do you make something that's useful more useful? Where's the innovation? And this is a great example of. Yeah. We're just going to do it. Right, because it was competing against, you know, town and countries and yeah. other things that were capable minivans, but this kind of leveled up. It took it to a, a different level of, of design. And and they incorporated the drivetrain into style, into yeah. this design is, is incredible. Oh, yeah. No, it's... Do you know about the accessory drive thing? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah there's like yeah. a... Yeah, it's, it's thing, yeah. everything. Yeah, I feel like this is one of those things that uh, you, like... Like, real car geeks, if you want to really know, like, they're not taken in too much by status or anything. If they get geeked out over the Previa, you know you're dealing with the real deal because it's – these are fascinating. And this was all Calti, right? This was something that, yeah. which is remarkable. Yeah. Uh, what else we got there, Taylor? Let's switch to another uh, – uh, this is an interesting – this is a more late, a later concept. This is 2014, 15. Were you guys around for this guy? Yeah. You were. Tell me a little about this one because I think this is an interesting design. And also, is – is the checkerboard pattern are those translucent? Is that a DLO of sorts back there? Yeah, this is this this vehicle reconfigures to different to different purposes. Ah, um, what was this one called? Wow, I can't remember what was this one. The UT. Does it say it on there? I can't remember. <laughs> I'm, I'm reading. Oh, the U. Oh, right, U something. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I should have remembered the what the name was. Yeah. yeah, yeah, but this was this is a cool little vehicle. Um, yeah, yeah, this is an era where um, you know where, where we build an idea from a not not what the vehicle is but really how people are going to use the vehicle right so this vehicle um you've probably seen versions of it with different uh different paint schemes yeah or different advertisements so it's it's kind of a um, you know for for people that want to own their own business and uh you know right this is a this is a vehicle that kind of enables that did this uh did this turn into any production vehicle in the end did it translate down to anything or not yet I think it had a lot of influence, but I can't think of. I don't think it's, yeah. it went directly through in the way that the Previa did. Yeah. Huh? Okay. Those headlights are novel. Yeah, yeah no, the headlights are. This is a cool yeah. little thing. Yeah. Honestly, this is very cool. Um, wheels. And I know the uh, 
2008 Scion XB, the, the facelifted version of the XB. I was a big fan of the first gen XB, the very boxy one, and then they changed. Yep. Were you were you around during that period? So our studio, or yes. where Adam and I work, is is uh, in Michigan actually. And, and okay. We do the production vehicles. Gotcha. Um, so we we we've seen all those developments. I saw the XB, the second generation development right. happen from a distance, and I owned I owned one of each of those. Actually. Oh, the first and yeah. the second gen. Yeah. The really cool vehicles. So they you were. get to see them before they get to the production side. Yeah. So you're able to see which stylistic elements make the cut. Absolutely. And which ones are still in the future file. Yeah, yeah right. that's right. That's right. Yeah, you know, the XB, uh, that second gen, started as a show car. Right, I remember the, the yep. T, T, it stood for like two box something, yeah, right? T2, I remember the T2B, I think. Yeah, yeah. T2B, yeah, right, yep. right. Yeah. Yeah. You know, um, that Scion was a really cool brand. Yep. You know, aimed for um, a youth market, you know, tr always tried to be edgy. Yeah. So that, that, uh, that vehicle was really really pretty pretty slick and it's uh, open up new opportunities for you guys to work with different design approaches yeah. because of branding yeah. that's amazing i like i'm i i always like the original the honesty of the original xb it was just what it was the second one did have a little cooler look but i thought a little utility is lost and bold choice of a single reverse lamp which is yeah. not yeah. not often oh, yeah. done yeah yeah, yeah. I, I i personally like the first gen a little bit more also me too see all right I you know there's something up. like there's something really the airiness of it. the first gen. Yeah. I love. Yeah. Everyone's put a whole washing machine in mine. It's great. Yeah, but you know everything got better on the second gen. It's it drove better. It yeah. had better safety. It had better comfort. Right. Um, everything about it. But there's something kind of raw about that first gen that that sure. magic is hard to recapture. Yeah. No. I I, I definitely love those. Um, I remember this was from a couple years. Were you guys working? Uh, cause this is not that long ago. This is just like two or three years ago. Oh, right, this is a podcast. So we're looking at a, a very advanced, uh, sleek black car. I think notable thing about it, no divi no visible division for the window daylight openings for the windows and the body. It's all smooth, um, and it looks kind of like, uh, you know, like if Darth Vader made gumdrops, it might be kind of like that. It's cool, and it's sleek. has kind of little winglets. Do you want to talk about this at all? So this, again, came from the uh, Newport uh, the California concept studio. Yeah. Right, yeah. And... I think this was called the Fun V. Yeah, I think it was the Fun V, yeah. And it was about how cars could communicate with each other, and then all those were LED screens. Oh, so right. So the reason it's such a blank canvas the way you have it shown there is because it's a blank canvas. <laughs> and Referencing V to V. So, yeah, and it was like, so if you had, if I remember correctly, the... Um, so these are matrix, dot yes, matrix LEDs. And you can communicate anything through it, whether it's text or pictures or mood or, oh, I see. and you'd be able to link to other vehicles that have the same tech and gotcha. it was based around kind of an integrated tech system. And then that vehicle itself was a canvas to be able to project your, yourself. Okay. Now in your division in Michigan for pure concept cars, do you have any input in these kinds of things or they just go right to a show? We, we compete. You compete? Oh, you do. Sometimes if we're lucky, if we're lucky. Sometimes. We're usually busy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I think, honestly, we we mainly do production right. cars. All right. So. Well, so, well, we can switch. Let's talk about production cars because I think design-wise at uh, Toyota right now, I think personally the biggest change that I've seen, like as far as individual cars that dramatically change, have to be the Prius. The new Prius, I think, is fantastic looking. I think it's Gorgeous. a genuinely lovely car. In any context, it's just it, the proportions are great, the detailing is great, and the previous generations I feel like were an example. Like where they got to was an example of a direction Toyota design seemed to be heading, which was extremely complicated. There was a lot going on in the front ends of these things. There were flaps and levers and and little lumpy things, and it was just getting very ornate. And then the switch is pretty dramatic to the clean lines now. What happened? Tell tell me about that. Sometimes design studios need to change. Yeah. And I feel like that what you were describing was the end of a certain era of design for right. Toyota. Yeah. Um, we've, we had tried a lot of things. There was a period of time where everything just needed to be new and different. And that was the goal. Yeah. And it was always achieved. Um, and then I think as we turn the chapter to this, the new chapter that I think the world is seeing now. Yeah. Whether it's being done in Japan, at the concept studios, Europe or at the production studio, we are all working very much together to create kind of a cleaner, modern direction. Yeah. Like, 
I think this thing looks great. I'm a diehard car guy. Sure. Priuses weren't necessarily on my radar. Right. I work there. I look at this going, well, I would have this yeah. in my driveway. This looks Absolutely. great. Like, this yeah. is a good-looking car. And there's been a big shift globally within the design network for attractive, universally attractive, modern-feeling vehicles. And, you know, there's a ton of very talented designers globally for Toyota. Yeah. And their voices are being heard. In the ma- and really, design management is also really supportive. So I feel like there's been a big shift within the company because, again, we rounded out an error of what you were describing, and it worked very well. But you can't keep doing the same thing. You have to turn the page. And this was our page turn. So this was this was an acknowledged thing. You Like, the design houses at Toyota realized we've pushed the old school as far as we're likely to, re- re- to take it yeah. and a clear shift. Because it, it, visually, it definitely seems like that happened. So It speaks to the strength of an organization as well to be able to find, you know, a new starting point. And turn on a dime like that. That's great. And it is very busy. I'm sure you have been very busy. <laughs> was there what was it? there was a concept version of this that came out before? Or I don't know if there was. There wasn't. It was a it's kind of just was a surprise. Yeah. It came out of nowhere. Yeah. yeah. How often does that happen? Usually you, you telegraph things with a concept, don't you? Is that traditional? Uh, yes and no. Yes and no. Yes and no. Okay. I think uh, I think in this case there was a decision to not telegraph to to, to come out and you know. Get, yeah. get the full the full impact at, at launch. Right. Uh, you certainly have that. I, I feel like concept cars in general have shifted how the industry uses them. It used yeah. to be like, here's kind of what it could look like. What do you think? Right. And then people would say, oh, we love it. And then you'd see the production car later. And realistically, most times that happened, the production car was already kind of done. Yes. You know, yeah. and then they do like a show version. Yeah. I feel like concepts now, at least for Toyota, are showing future technology usage scenarios really advanced feeling opposed to what do you think the next design should be right you know i feel like that's an older style of how a concept has been used right um within reason obviously all companies have some of that still including us but i i look at what toyota as a corporation has done with concepts a lot of the stuff is some of those things oh this is a digital platform to telegraph emotion through your car right it's getting a test of what this the, the distant future could be Hmm. Internally, we do this then. Right, sure. That makes sense. I have one quick comment I wanted to ask you guys about. So we were looking at that Tacoma picture, and on the Tacoma, I noticed the door handles, the wheels. There was chrome on this truck again. Well, you're showing a limited. (laughs) Yeah, they're still limited. But there's still chrome on the truck. Yes. The resurgence of chrome, because it seems in recent years that chrome was something that was, you see less and less of as far as a trim item or a sparkle item. When you design. have as many grades as Tacoma, Tundra, a lot of these truck vehicles have, we wanted to be mindful of the customers that still appreciate Chrome. And that's just what it comes down to. So whether it, we thought it was important, because there are truckers, like truck, diehard truck people, they want Chrome. still like Chrome. Yeah. Like it's not, Chrome isn't dead for everyone. There's a grouping of people that love the, you know, murdered out, blacked out vehicles. That's fine. We want to build people for them, we, or build cars for them. Right. And then there's people who really appreciate tasteful amounts of chrome and we want to build trucks for those people and that's why you're seeing we were very careful because we tried some that were maybe a little over the top with too much chrome right you know that's kind of how we do things you got to go too far and then reel it back in we thought right it's a tasteful amount of chrome for the for the individual who would really want a limited that i think i think it's it. fantastic so, it's bold thank you all right i think we have to wrap up pretty soon but before we go uh just quickly uh i want to know what your first cars were what was your first car my first car was a 1974 corvette the Corvette? That's what no you way. started with? Yep. Holy I still crap. have it. Heck of a wow, start. Wow, really? A 74 Corvette? Yeah. Wait, so that'd be, that'd be, that's like a C, that's a C3. Yeah. Did you have the wipers that went under the panel? No, by 74 that went away. But it uh, has the flip-up lights. Oh At least yeah. they stretch the hood by th- back then, so you didn't have to didn't vacuum. Have to yeah. I always like those. How about you? What was your first car? 82 you? Corolla. Oh, an 82 Corolla. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> the family. <laughs> it had a hood ornament. It was <laughs> that was the <laughs> one that really had uh, the bumpers over time would get really velvety looking. You know, that black rubber would look like velvet after a while. I always kind of like that stuff all right look we gotta we gotta knock it off now but i appreciate you guys coming out this was a huge treat and fascinating to talk about with you guys uh so um yeah thanks again for everything everybody go out and buy a whole bunch of toyotas so uh (laughs) these guys can keep doing what they do thanks gentlemen thanks Thanks very much
You can find all these podcasts and some really wonderful articles you can't get anywhere else on www.theautopian.com. And P.S., if you love what we do here, you can become a Vinyl Velour or Rich Corinthian Leather member of The Autopian by going to theautopian.com and clicking the button that says support us because as these podcasts are probably demonstrating, we need all the help we can get.